Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and I love to learn about international politics. I'm also a huge history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. So each day I'm going to share some of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's dig into today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon I'm gonna teach you stuff, no it won't be tough Gonna go a year till you've had enough It's 365 Today, November 2nd in 1930, Haile Selassie I became the emperor of Ethiopia Of course, many men have become emperors of many nations over the past couple thousand years. Why is this instance more important than other (laughs) emperoring? Let's find out. Haile Selassie was born as Li Teferi Makonen on July 23rd in 1892. The moniker Li was an indicator that the so-called was a child of royalty. Teferi meant one who was respected or feared. He was born in the village of Ejersa Garo, His mother was the daughter of a ruling chief and his father the grandson of King Selassie. His paternal grandmother was the aunt of an emperor and the daughter of a king. This lineage made it so that he could ascend to royalty and positions of political power as a descendant of the king of Sheba and King Solomon, who were biblical figures across multiple religions. In the most well-known story, the Queen of Sheba brings a caravan of gifts to King Solomon, who presided over Israel. His father was also a cousin of and an advisor to the current emperor, Emperor Menelik II. Emperor Menelik didn't have a male heir, and the two grew close after Teferi's dad died in 1906. He was homeschooled by French missionaries, and his intellect was advanced for a child. This impressed the Emperor Menelik, who was a mentor of sorts to the young Teferi. He first became a governor when he was only 16 years old. Kind of like how when we turn 16, we can drive a car. Except for me, I never got a license. As a governor, he developed a salaried civil service program and was known as a progressive politician. He married one of the great granddaughters of Emperor Menelik, securing him even more future influence. He was a popular politician, known for his globally minded nature and belief in education. He became even more widely known and respected when he secured Ethiopia a spot in the League of Nations in 1923. Partially because of his perceived connections to ancient royalty, Teferi was treated as a messiah under the governance of Empress Zudichu. Teferi served as a regent and was known for being more progressive than the conservative empress. The empress died in 1928 and Teferi ascended two years later. On November 2nd, 1930, he became emperor and took the title Haile Selassie which means might of the Trinity. The coronation was opulent and glamorous and royalty from all over the world came to see Selassie sworn in as emperor. In his first year as emperor, he created a new constitution that limited the powers of parliament. He centralized government power and thus most rulings ended up coming from him. He focused on improving education within Ethiopia as a means to modernize the country. When Italy attempted to colonize Ethiopia in 1935, he led the resistance and as a result was forced into exile. But... Due in large part to his efforts, Ethiopia was able to resist colonization and thus became one of the only two sub-Saharan African countries to never be colonized by a European nation. While in exile, he became a face of political liberation and used the help of the League of Nations and the British to be put back into power in Ethiopia in 1941. Selassie is credited with steering sub-Saharan African politics post-World War II. He made the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, the Center for the Organization of African Unity. He made a new constitution in 1955, one which demanded equal rights for all Ethiopian citizens, though it kept power consolidated under the emperor himself. Selassie was known around the world, and in Jamaica, he began to be regarded as a symbol of black liberation. Marcus Garvey's pan-African movement dovetailed with Selassie's reign, and people began to see Selassie as an ordained black leader. This was because Marcus Garvey... Jamaican political activist and leader of the Pan-African movement, had prophesied, look to Africa, where a black king shall be crowned. He shall be the redeemer. Shortly before Selassie came to power in Ethiopia, Garvey's teaching stated that a black king would appear, and that would signal that it was time to make an exodus to Africa from slavery-plagued nations like Jamaica. 
This, combined with the belief that Selassie was related to King Solomon, led to the Rastafarian belief that Selassie was the incarnation of God, with his purpose being to unify African nations and everyone in the human race. Rastafari comes from Ras, which means prince, and Tafari, his name before he took the name Haile Selassie. In 1966, Selassie visited Jamaica and was greeted with rapturous adoration. Crowds came to meet Selassie, among them a young musician, Robert Nesta Marley. Yep, the man who would become Bob Marley. Today, Marley is more commonly associated with Rastafarianism than Selassie himself. In the 1970s, famine, unemployment, and government inaction plagued Ethiopia, and Selassie was blamed for many of the country's issues. He was deposed in 1974 by a military coup. He was the last emperor of Ethiopia and had been in power for almost 45 years. Selassie's political legacy is a mixed bag, Some credit him with keeping Ethiopia out of colonial rule by Italy, but others view him as a tyrant. Like many people in history, there really isn't one true answer. His years in power were filled with both benevolence and harsh governance, making his legacy a complex one that inspires scholarship to this day. Now, let's talk about a revolution in music. Today, in 1920, the Pittsburgh radio station KDKA became the first commercially licensed radio station. They weren't the first radio station on the air, but they were the first to get the official broadcast license. Americans were still mostly getting their news from the newspapers, but when the newly licensed KDKA announced the results of the Harding-Cox presidential election on air many hours before the morning newspapers spread the news, the public began to understand the appeal of the burgeoning gadget. KDKA is still on air in Pittsburgh today. Today's special guests are known for creating quite a stir in the dance music scene. Loud Luxury is here to talk about their biggest moments on tour, something that may feel like a fever dream nowadays. Hey, what's going on? This is Loud Luxury. November 2nd was a very special day for us. On November 2nd, we capped off one of the most craziest months of our lives between shows, frat parties, and an upcoming Kelly and Ryan TV performance. We were playing our show in Madison, Wisconsin, And this was during our Nights Like This tour, where we were going coast to coast from Canada and America. This time of year last year was one of the craziest times we've ever had in our lives, and it's one of the most unforgettable memories. And now for our final segment of the day, I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a November 2nd in my life. On November 2nd, 2016, I took a screenshot of my search history for that day, and it said, oh my god my goodness. It started with, do fish have tongues? And then it went to, can you actually hug a bear? And then it went to, I want to hug a grizzly bear, but not get hurt. And then it got to gigantic cat. And then it went to 10,000 bees, Google image search. And then it says, can, can <laughs> one of my searches was, can sandals be business casual? And then it ended on prediction date for human flight. <laughs> oh my God. I guess like once you're a meme lord, you are always a meme lord. I don't really know. It was kind of a horrible series of of searches, but there you have it. And that's all for today. Come back tomorrow for more weird and funky facts. And please subscribe on your favorite podcasting device. I'll see you tomorrow. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so... Don't leave too soon, I'm gonna teach you stuff, no it won't be tough, gonna go a year till you've had enough, it's 365.